something wicked this way comes to Gotham City, and it might just be tied to the dark past of Bruce Wayne. What'll happen next? Well, let's hop into the pages of Batman Damned issue number two and find out for ourselves. Alrighty then, so picking up from where the last issue left off, the Joker is dead. His body got pulled out of the river, yet despite that, a bunch of signs point to him still being alive, or quite possibly being a ghost. But let's face it, you don't remember any of that from issue one. If you're like me, the only thing you remember from issue one is Batman's donger and the controversy surrounding it. Don't worry though, thanks to DC Comics and Warner Brothers' overall reactionary stance, this will be a dong-free zone. John Constantine, all-round magic man, says that if Batman wants to find the Joker, living or dead, he should go to the Cavern Club. Oh, sorry, that's a club called Cavern, not the place that the Beatles used to play. Furthermore, if John Constantine is such an ace when it comes to the dark arts, why is he referring Batman to someone else? This strengthens my theory from issue one that Batman may actually have died and this is all some sort of fever dream. Now, peppered throughout this issue, we also get a bunch of disturbing flashbacks to Bruce Wayne's youth. In this universe, we find out that his family wasn't nearly as nice and cheery as we always believed. His father was clearly cheating on his mother, and little Bruce also liked to dress up as the Lone Ranger. Ah, yes, a nice reference to the roots of superheroes wearing costumes. I suppose having him dress up as Zora would be a little too on the nose, huh? Another thing we end up finding out this issue is Bruce has a rather interesting relationship with his mother. After the dad storms off, he mock shoots his mother. Well, golly gee, this is almost the complete opposite of all the complexes Bruce usually has when Frank Miller is writing him. Now, when Batman eventually makes it to the Cavern Club, we see who's running the place, and it is a rather familiar name, if not face, DJ Blood. As in, Jason Blood, the human host for Etrigan the Demon, even though DJ Blood just kind of already looks like Etrigan. And, oh, hey, you know how Etrigan the Demon, whenever he talks, he usually rhymes? That's fun. Well, hey, here's a clever twist on it, because this is a dark, edgy, black label book. He doesn't just rhyme, he raps. So you better get ready for the sickest gangster beats ever written by a 56-year-old white man. And, yeah, I'm honestly surprised that Azarello was that old myself. He's always kind of been like Steve Martin to me, eternal. Batman tries to beat up the demon for information about where the Joker may or may not be, but this quickly gets turned against him. You see, the demon has sway over everyone in his club lair. And if Batman doesn't leave him alone right now, they're all going to shoot each other. Man, that's a lot of guns that they got smuggled into this nightclub. Security is lax. To think the last time I was at the club, they patted me down and took my homemade drambui. Now, Batman is greatly out of his element in this situation. Luckily, Dead Man manages to swoop on in and help him out by taking control of one of the patrons and helping turn the tide of battle. They manage to escape the club with their hides intact, but oh no, a fire got started. Which means Batman is forced to turn his bat butt around, run right back in, and save everyone who might be burning to death. One person he does manage to find amidst the flames is that green-cloaked homeless guy who is almost 100% the Spectre, even though they have yet to actually give him a name, but I'm certain he's the Spectre. Batman jaw jacks with this guy for a little too long and a bunch of burning debris ends up falling on him. Luckily, he is saved by Etrigan, who pulls him out. Yeah, they're friends now, everybody. Turns out the best way to earn a demon's respect is to run into a burning building while everyone else is running away. You know, Ladder 49 style. Etrigan also probably has the quote of this entire issue when he says, Gotham City, more like Gotham shitty, am I right? Black Label, everyone, a mature book for adults to break boundaries. It's also around this time, too, Batman comes face to face with the Enchantress, a kind of messed up fairy godmother figure who claims that when Batman dies, his soul belongs to her. That is, of course, unless he's not dead already, of which there's like a 50-50 split on. Now, Batman still never did find the information he was looking for on the Joker, but luckily he didn't have to because the Joker finds him defacing a bat symbol and turning it into a big giant smiley face. Batman ends up engaging with a bunch of Joker henchmen who are shooting it out with the police. It's at this point we discover that that's not the Joker at all. It's a space station. I mean, it's Harley Quinn dressed up as the Joker. Now, part of me wants to say Sean Gordon Murphy already did the Harley as Joker thing better earlier in the year in Batman White Knight, but that'd be a petty thing to say, so I'll just keep it to myself. What exactly 
does Harley want in this situation? Well, she says with the Joker dead, she no longer has any reason to live, and so she figured she'd go out in a blaze of glory. For a brief second, Batman actually seems to take pity on Harley Quinn, which because this is a Brian Azzarello story, how dare you show any emotion besides anger or sadness, damn it. And Batman ends up instantly paying the price as Harley Quinn decides to drug him and then proceeds to, well... Well, she tries to rape him on the bat signal. In an incredibly graphic scene that we all know full well was probably meant to be even more graphic before DC Black Label got cold feet and decided to push everything back by months. Luckily for our hero, Harley Quinn was using the cheap drugs because he's able to reverse that hold and, well, it's kind of left open-ended if he strangles her or not. We also see the Enchantress's reflection in the water underneath Batman, so maybe he's not a murderer, maybe he's just possessed, which might also explain what went down with the Joker, but it's at that point the comic is over. So that was Batman Damned issue number two, everybody, and ultimately for a three-part series, the middle part didn't get a lot accomplished. In fact, we pretty much have all the same questions that we did at the end of issue number one. Also, two issues in and I still really don't feel like DC Black Label is living up to all the hype. I I mean, outside some more sexual situations and a lot more swearing, I don't really see what's being done in this story that couldn't be done in the main universe. It just kind of feels like every other Brian Azzarello Batman story I've ever read. Actually, no, that's not 100% true. This story actually feels like Brian Azzarello is trying too hard in some places. Which, again, I don't know how you can push the envelope as a writer when they pretty much already kneecapped you right out of the gate. Beyond that, a lot of the meetings and everything else, it just feels completely contrived. I will, however, say, though, that the artwork really damn solid. Lee Bermejo should be proud, because I think this might be some of his very best work to date. Overall, I'd feel comfortable giving this one a 6 out of 10. Hey there, everyone. It's Cave Jewel again, and I want to thank you so much for watching to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, why not check out some of these other videos available from my channel? Then you can follow me on Twitter and Facebook at Cave Jewel, so you're always up to speed on what I'm doing next. And hey, if you're feeling in a supportive mood, why not check out my Patreon page? Patrons get exclusive access to videos and content before anyone else, and you can do so for as little as a dollar a month. And, uh, oh, yeah, the, uh, the jacket, uh was a gift actually. Someone bought it for me off my Amazon wish list, which I also have and you can also find linked down in the description. Didn't didn't think anyone would actually buy me a Slytherin jacket. Put it mostly on there for a laugh. But hey, it's the 20th anniversary of Harry Potter, so I figured uh, might as well wear it, show it off, and you know, thank the person who bought it for me. So, until we meet again everyone, bye bye